the clock on the sanctuary wall says 11 o'clock. So let's begin our worship with the ringing of the bell and the lighting of the candles. Candles have been lit. Listen to the ringing of our bell. It is Sunday, March 29th, 2020. Listen to the reading of the Word of God for the people of God this morning. It comes from the book of Hebrews, chapters 11, verses 1 through 8. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by the faith of our ancestors, received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through this he received approval as righteous, God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death, and he was not found because God had taken him. For it was attested before he was taken away that he had pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, for whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning and built an ark to save his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir to righteousness that is in accordance with faith. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out, not knowing where he was going. May the people of God hear the word of God this morning. Thanks be to God. Faith. Faith is not wishful thinking. Faith is the, the trust that God is present, the trust that God will lead us, the trust to take action that is within the teachings of love given to us by God's Son, Jesus the Christ. So faith is trust, and faith is trustful action. When we enter this sanctuary, we are inheritors of a faith that began in 1845. In 1845, people gathered together and called themselves Young's Chapel Baptist Church, but they didn't meet in this building. This building is at least the third or possibly fourth building that Young's Chapel is called a sanctuary. This particular sanctuary was begun in the planning stage by Reverend J.F. Fletcher, beginning in the 1890s, as he led the membership of this church to plan a building that was separate from Oak Hill Academy that the church had helped form in 1878. Our ancestors of faith of Young's Chapel, out of their desire to worship God, completed this building in 1908. Won't you think for a moment on the date 1845. Members of this church living in a remote area of Appalachia were affected by national and international crises and events. 
When they got together in 1845, little did they realize that they and others within this congregation would experience the Civil War, the uncertainty of Reconstruction, a series of financial crises in the late 1800s, including 1874, 1884, 1890, and 1894. Then came World War I, the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918, the stock market crash of 1929, followed by over 10 years of financial depression. Then World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War and the upheavals of the 1960s, the Cold War, and in our present time, local, national, and world events that affect us. Yet we are inheritors of a Christian faith which for 2,000 years has seen the world turn on its axis and been affected by the swirling churn of human affairs for good and for evil. And throughout these times, we are called to have faith that God is present and that you and I can take faithful action as taught by Jesus the Christ to act in love. Now what I want to do is something different. So if you want to stay with me, I'm going to attempt to, to clamber up into the attic of our sanctuary and show you something that only two or three people in our congregation besides myself have seen. And that is some of the history of this sanctuary where we gather to worship in faith a living God. But it took action on the part of our spiritual ancestors and on our part too to build and then as we have done, expand. And so... Maybe I can get all this together. I think I stopped the former video and by accident from clambering around. I want to show you something. First of all, when you hear the bell ring, there's two ropes that lead to our church bell. On one side is the, the rope that tolls the bell, and that's this one here. And on the other side is a rope that uh, actuates a, a different mechanism. And that's, that strikes the side of the bell, whereas that rope actually tolls the bell. I'm gonna try not to fall, so stick with me. I'm gonna show you something else. You see here, the last remodeling efforts of Young's Chapel when we extended the sanctuary. And these are modern day trusses. But there's something a little more fascinating back in the back here. So I've got to figure out how to get through here without falling through the ceiling and causing the church financial difficulties and me health difficulties. So I'm sure this video is rather cumbersome to watch at the moment, but I'm gonna make my way through these modern day trusses and show you something a little more fascinating. So stay with me. We added insulation a few years ago. Dustin Phipps and some others came up here. Uh, don't know exactly how to do the lighting. Hold on a minute, let me pause this. Here, here's what I clambered up here to show you. I don't know how well you can see it, but the roof of this church is supported by a series of king rafters that were hand-hewn either in the late 1800s or early 1900s by craftsmen in this area. And you can see where they're joined. And the work on these there's no nails in it that I have been able to see. It's all um, pegged together or jointed together. And then you have these large hand-hewn beams that go up to support 
the peak of the roof and you see the rafters. You see the sheathing that was placed on it and then of course the current shingles are on it as well. And here's the ladder that was part of the old sanctuary that went up to the bell. And when we added on to the church a few years ago, we tore off the old vestibule. Some of you remember helping do that. And then we added on to the sanctuary. And then we added our present vestibule with the porch area and the steps leading down. But I wanted you to see uh, the structure of this church of over a hundred years ago and how it still stands and withstands the weather and the winds and all the times that have come since its building. And hopefully it will continue to be here. But as we look at these, these, old, these old rafters and how it's so well constructed with loving and careful hands, it reminds me that uh, you and I need to reflect on the structure of our faith. What gives us the strength to bear harsh winds of both nature and human activity? What helps guide us and give us strength to bear the strain and continue to give evidence of our faith even when it is sorely tested? Our faith is hewn into our lives one day at a time. Our faith is shaped and formed as we put ourselves into God's hands. Our faith is only as strong as our willingness to work and worship in good times and in uncertain times as we are facing. Will our faith have the structure and strength that the roof of this sanctuary has? to withstand and bear witness, to stand and proclaim not with harshness or self-righteousness, but with gentleness and love of our faith in God to guide us through this time. As I heard earlier this week, no test is passed that isn't taken. Well, we're in a time of testing. May our faith in God and our communion with one another give us the ability to pass the test of our present situation. Thus endeth the lesson for us today. And as always, hear this blessing. Your children of God, created by God, loved by God. As we go about our limited activities, may our faith bear witness to the God who is present with us. And amen.